Hey, so welcome back. Um, so I've been working with educators uh, across the country over the past six, seven months and trying to figure out and navigate um, the really enormous challenge of online and hybrid learning. And one of the questions that keeps coming up again and again is how can I run some sort of formative assessment, but maybe have a little bit of a sense of control over the pace or um, the kind of the experience that students are getting. So I wanted to share this one idea about how we can use Google Forms um, with kind of password protection uh, added to the form, which only allows students to navigate to the next step when you kind of give them that keyword. So this could be a scenario when you're in a Zoom or Google Meet call and you might want students to start working on an activity, uh, a formative check-in for example, but not necessarily race through the entire experience all in one shot. You might work with them a bit, maybe do a stop at check-in, maybe have a bit of a discussion around how they responded, and then you can give them a key word to unlock the next experience. So that, and then there's another process I want to show you where you can actually link Google Forms together so students might have a chunk of ideas and then have a password to actually unlock a completely new form. And the advantage to doing that is when they submit to form number one, all that data drops onto a spreadsheet. And then when they work on part two, that's a completely separate entry. So here's the Google form that I've mocked up. You can see I'm calling it password demo. So I always ask for last name, first name, and then the students move on to this question group where they have a few questions, multiple choice, open response, whatever you want to build in. But then before you're allowing them to move on to question group two or kind of block two or experience two, what we're going to add in is a short answer question. And what you need to do is go triple dots and use response validation. So when we turn on response validation, that's when you can say, okay, it must be a text entry. It must contain, for example, the word zebra might be the keyword. And then custom error text, I'll put try again. So what we can do now is when we push this form out to our students, they can work on question one, they can work on question two, but then they come to the password question, which when they enter it incorrectly, that will allow them to move on to question group two, and then you can build whatever you'd like there. So during the context of a live call or a scenario where you might have some students in front of you and some students at home, you can then reveal the keyword, either drop it in the chat, say it out loud to the group, everyone can enter the keyword, and then they move on to question group two. So what does this look like from the student perspective? Let me go to the preview mode and just show you what this looks like here. So I'll drop in my entry as I'm role playing the student. Right, so there's demo question one, demo question two, and then before students can advance, right, they must put in the keyword, and you might say, okay, the keyword, tell them it's zebra, they hit next, oh, that's zebra with a capital Z, there we go, hit next, and then it unlocks the next section of the form. So that's what it will look like for the students. So another model here that we can use is to go, okay, we're going to build in, right, a keyword, for example, to unlock the next section. But in the next section, here's what we'll do. We just go down here and I will say, thank you for working on part one. So I'll call this part one complete. And then what I'm gonna add in, just for co like confirmation, I completed all part one questions. Yes, yeah, so students are just confirming. So now what we're going to do, so students have a form, last name, first name. They work on a series of questions. There is a keyword, right, to submit to get to the page that says, I'm officially done, right? So you could put in a time frame. Um, you can tell kids, hey, when you're done with part one, drop the keyword into a chat, however you want to manage that kind of keyword or password idea. Then they come here, right? And this is just confirming like, yes, I'm totally done with part one. But what I'm gonna do now is build a second form. So this form is called password form demo one. It's gonna build a second form really quickly. I'll call this one password form part two. And what I'll do here, right? So I'll add a series of questions. There's like a sample question. Let's just add in one more. So we have another question, another question. So this is all part two. So what I'm gonna do is grab the link to part two. So I'll go to send up in the top corner and then I'll go to link and I'm gonna copy this link to part two. The reason why I'm doing that is when students finish up part one, 
I'll go to the settings of the part one of this form, go into the presentation mode, and then drop the link here. So click here to work on part two. Right, and there's the link to part two. I'll save that. So now what's gonna happen is students work on part one, and I'll go through this process and show you what it looks like. And when they're done, right, yes, confirm, I'm done with part one. What they will see because of the settings adjustment on the form under the presentation settings is they will have a link to submit to part two. Now what I would also do here is take this form, I'll go to the responses tab, I'm going to create the spreadsheet right now, and I'm gonna create a new spreadsheet for password form demo one. So I'm creating that. And then what I'll do when I go to the second spreadsheet, or excuse me, the second form, I'm gonna point it to this exact same spreadsheet. So that's form number one is connected here. Now I'm going to go to form number two, go to the responses tab, and under the spreadsheet option, I want to point it to the exact same spreadsheet. So in this instance, when students finish part one and they hit submit, all of their information is collected. When they work on part two and hit submit, all of their information is going to be collected. So one of the challenges of Google Forms is that if students don't submit the completed thing, you don't have any of the data. So if we break the form actually into multiple experiences, but link them together and maybe even password protect that linking, across the bottom of the form, you can see on the bottom, we have a tab for this is form number one and a tab for form number two. And again, the whole process to link those together was on form number two, I simply went to send and grabbed the link, where there's my link, and then I went back to form number one and went to the settings of form number one under presentation and dropped the link there. So now we have a few different strategies we can use. Obviously, it might be simpler to keep everything in one form and just unlock section by section so you have some idea of um, kind of the pace at which students were working. Or if you're interested in chunking these into kind of shorter experiences but multiple different forms, we have the ability to link forms together in that settings presentation tab. So I hope this was a helpful little video walkthrough, maybe a way to rethink the way you're building and constructing your forms. So good luck. Don't forget to subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.